the London Symphony Orchestra is sharing the stage with a unique group of people. Each is trying to break free from addiction. They have been brought together by one man, James McConnell, also a recovering alcoholic. I was drinking every day and I was drinking most of the day. And that was the point that I thought, I am fucked. And it was a choice, it really was a choice. Shall I live, shall I die? And I wanted to live. Music became a big part of James's recovery. Now, he wants to bring music back to 10 others who've been damaged by addiction. I'd need to crack open the vodka and try and get it down. Dropping a pill, taking ecstasy. All I care about is getting out of my head. He's about to create an orchestra made up of addicts who can hopefully perform on stage with the best. What an occasion. Little, little addicts orchestra of really nice people that have fucked up their lives beside the London Symphony Orchestra. Christ, it's going to be scary. So let's go and do it. It's very bloody exciting. They have eight weeks to overcome their musical demons. Sometimes I really wish that I wasn't <sighs> like this. It just makes me feel ill when I finish. When you finish? Freak out. And internally, I freak out. Can they conquer the fear of performing that, for many, was the cause of their addiction? Fuck it, enjoy it, fuck it, enjoy it, fuck it, enjoy it, fuck it, enjoy it. I think that's it. asking a bit much, James. Well, I've decided that I'm going to do that, stone cold sober, and whatever happens, happens. I can't stop walking around. Just nail it. To pull off a performance alongside one of the world's leading orchestras. Our musicians for the evening, here they all are. James's first job is to find his potential musicians. There are nearly two million addicts in the UK. For some, fear of performing music drove them to drink and drugs. Before anxiety took over, Jules was an exceptional classical violinist. This is to say that I got the highest mark in the country at the time for grade eight violin, so I was just 14. How many gold medals do they offer every year? One. One. And you got it. Eventually, my teacher sent me on to a professor at the Royal Academy uh -huh. to help me tackle the next stage kind of thing. But um, I just felt like I couldn't live up to that reputation, that grade eight gold medalist. I'm used mm. to being slated for my music. Shouted down. Yeah, and really? being told I'm rubbish. and. Really? Um, you know, one big statement that stays in my head from school is, I'm not surprised your mum left you, you're stupid. And that's from a teacher. That is from a teacher? Yeah. What, what really, really upsets me is when I see somebody of your calibre not giving yourself the pride that you really deserve. Yeah, I know. I long to help you to become what you can be. Jules's insecurities about the violin led her to start drinking to excess. When I found drink, that was it, really. It just made me feel better as a person. I just felt confident inside. I was suffering from withdrawal, so I'd need to crack open the vodka and try and get it down. And then when, it, when I got it down, it was like, you know, temporary relief. As a teenager, Marco was a star violinist, but he hasn't played violin for nearly 30 years. It's the weekend before his first rehearsal with the Attic's orchestra, and the violin he's borrowed has just arrived. So, a violin case. Um. Um, that sounds pretty awful, and... Your belly flopped, and it hurts, and you don't know what to do next. 
It'll be okay. Start swimming would be a good idea. Well, put it like this. You can't make me play it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get you out of it. Ten recovering addicts are about to start rehearsing for the next eight weeks near Trafalgar Square. Some have been clean and sober for years, others for a few months. I really want to see a change in these people. Starting out as one thing and then becoming something else and maybe putting some of their musical demons to rest. And it's one thing playing an instrument by yourself, and that's fine, that's great. But then playing as a group, then something really magical happens. I'm an axe addict myself, I'm an alcoholic, I don't drink anymore. Music for me helped me regain my self-esteem and actually happiness. So we're going to play lots and lots and lots of music together. And at the end of the process, we're going to put on a concert. So let's go and do it. They'll rehearse at St. Martin's in the Fields, a world-famous classical venue. Handel played here, and so did Mozart. James is joining forces with a team from the London Symphony Orchestra. The creative director is Paul Rissman. So we're going to split into two groups, and each group, we're going to take this melody and do something with it. What you do to it is entirely up to you. You could simply put an accompaniment to it if you want. Paul starts by giving them just a simple Russian folk tune. Bindi, would you mind just playing it for us? He wants to see just how much they can make out of a simple musical idea when they work together. It's not about me telling the participants what to do. That's not how I work, even though I'm a composer. I'm here to get the group to make their own music. I don't understand addiction, but what I want to do is connect to people. If you are stuck, think of an emotion that you want to express through the melody and then just wrap that melody around that emotion. But, you know. That never came out, did it? Because everyone was too busy going. Rachel works as a session cellist for pop bands, but she's terrified of performing the orchestral music she loves. The final weeks of my drinking took place in that flat there, where that roof garden is. And we're standing on the spot where an ambulance actually came and picked me up. Ever since she was little, her dream has always been to play cello in an orchestra. I remember thinking, if I practice hard enough and I, I'm good enough at the cello and I get, everything will be OK if I'm good. She made it to become a star of the National Youth Orchestra. Then at the age of 14, she started having extreme panic attacks on stage. The adrenaline was just going and going and going. Black spots just kind of came before my eyes. I'll either scream or I'll walk off, so I chose walking off. It just made me sort of vow then and there that I was never gonna let that happen again. And I was very relieved when I started drinking and it disappeared. It was a huge relief. Rachel wants to return to the orchestral high she walked away from all those years ago. The feeling that you get playing an orchestra, you can't really recreate it in any other genre of music. And somewhere along the line, the fear and the anxiety about doing it just overtook. I just couldn't do it anymore. And I really, I regret it hugely. At the rehearsal, the group are coming up with variations in the folk tune, with help from the LSO double bassist Matt and violinist Bindi. When Marco stopped playing violin aged 22, his drinking continued. He had a major relapse just last year. I couldn't wait to get Michelle out of the house in the morning because she was going to work, get my son off to school, then my day could start. I'd be rattling and thinking, for fuck's sake, let's get out of the house so I can go and get my vodka and get on with my fucking day. And he will wait till I'm on the telephone call and then you will suddenly hear, really quietly, the front door go and he's nipped out around the corner and by the time he's come back five minutes later, he's necked half a bottle of vodka. Jules, like Marco, was nearly killed by addiction. They said that my liver it had failed um, and that I was just about to go into multiple organ failure. No. 
Jules got sober and started a family. But until now, she's never attempted to perform classical music since her addiction took over. By the end of the first session, the Addicts Orchestra have managed to produce their own take on the Russian folk tune. I thought that James would have written something and we'd just play it and rehearse it, and it's nothing like that at all, which was a bit scary. When I first picked up that violin, I just thought, what the hell have I done? I don't think there's ever going to be a complete absence of fear in my life, but a reduction would be nice. I wasn't expecting that. I think it was an amazing day. I, mean, I thought, Christ, I feel so at home here. A bunch of addicts. I, I, just, I, just, I just know what they're like. It's me. You know, I am an addict. James beat his own addiction to alcohol as a young man. But 20 years after he stopped drinking, his teenage son, Freddie, became addicted to drugs. Tragically, Freddie died of a heroin overdose at just 18 years old. He had a wonderful sense of humor. He was always saying very silly things. Quirky is what he was. He had a, a fairly high IQ, and he was assessed as gifted. He started playing the guitar, and then he started writing his own songs. But it was at this time at school when he started taking amyl nitrate. It sort of spiralled down from the age of about 13 till the day he died, when he was 18. We tried everything, me and his mum. We tried everything, understanding, and there was tough love. He couldn't quite get it. Freddie lost his own fight against addiction, but he believed music could be the key to saving other addicts. He always used to say to Dad, would you really look into the idea of music as being an aid for recovery? And I think if he, if he hadn't taken a dodgy dose of heroin, I think he might have got it eventually. I think he might have got to that point. Music can give you the same kind of feeling that drugs can, you know, but actually better. Because I know it's worked for me and because it, it may well have worked for him, I cannot see why it wouldn't work for others. The Addicts Orchestra are watching an LSO rehearsal at the Barbican to see what is expected of them. In six weeks' time, they need to be ready to take to the stage with these musicians. It's a rehearsal of Schubert's Unfinished Symphony, which brings back painful memories for Rachel. Well, I actually played that and walked off stage. That very piece. Oh, really? What, in reading a, in a, reading not in a the good college way. orchestra. No, no, having a panic attack, walked off. I've experienced similar up to that sort of level, but I think somehow if you can translate that into the feeling of intensity, which is a good feeling of intensity. On that occasion, with that piece... It didn't work. Didn't work. Um. <laughs> so it really was an unfinished symphony, <laughs> was, because I fucked it up halfway through the first movement. Relieved to be getting out. The LSO's creative director, Paul, now wants them to work together on an orchestral piece for the first time. He's chosen Vivaldi's Four Seasons, surely a safe starting place. So, on your chart, this is harmony from Vivaldi. Let's just try playing through the chords. I normally love Vivaldi, but it was kind of not Vivaldi. I mean, not Vivaldi, not today. Oh, how about a nice solo cello? Yeah. And the more everybody around me enjoyed it, the more kind of entrenched I got in a position of, I I'm really I'm determined not to enjoy this, you know. Are we supposed to be sounding like Vivaldi? No, you can say like anything you want. You know, poor Rachel had kind of been playing a bit of solo cello in the morning, and that annoyed me. Now, let me tell you, it's not James and it's not Rachel, it's definitely me. I didn't enjoy this morning, that's all. Mm -hmm. I wonder what everybody else thought. You, you didn't? I didn't enjoy it, no. I didn't understand the point of it and I thought we sounded awful. Careful. Please don't take this the wrong way, guys, but I'm just thinking, God, we all look a bit like twats here. 
<laughs> yeah, definitely. You kind of doing like Tchaikovsky dying swan Sorry, and stuff. I found that a bit offensive. It's part, yeah, it's, it's part of the process, surely. When she said to me, I felt crushed and like shit and thought, what have you done? As an alcoholic, I feel like I'm hypersensitive to stuff, to everything, especially to other people's perceptions of me. And working within that group on Wednesday was actually, I found it really tough. To assist in their recovery each week after rehearsals, the group stay on to share their experiences and support one another. Two therapists from the charity Action on Addiction, Kirby Gregory and Claire Clark, guide the sessions. For the perfectionist that lives in me, I was like, oh God, no, we can't move on, we can't, and Paul's like, no, we need to quickly. For all addicts, oh God, relapse is an ever-present threat. We are all still walking on very thin ice. You know, yeah. it's just how far you let yourself go. Don't always feel that my, whatever it is that I'm thinking is sort of worthy of... <laughs> because I've never felt that I've been as good as anybody else, so I'll just sit here and, you know, and just hide in a corner. I couldn't have done this a year ago. I would still be in my, sitting at home in my pants drinking vodka. <laughs> Andy has been clean from drugs for almost a year but he's relapsed many times before, so he doesn't yet have the trust of his 14-year-old daughter. In that door there, there's an electrical cupboard, and uh, we used to just kind of stand in there and, like, do our drugs and kind of just conceal ourselves from the police. You always used to find him, like, with his beer over there or something, or really strong cider, and then you've got either his needles or tinfoil there. It's not nice at all. You know, I was waking up in crack houses, begging people for a bit of heroin to try and feel a bit better. And if I couldn't score, then I was just so sick for that day. If it wasn't a nice room, no one would ever come in here. This used to be my, my dad's own crack den. My daughter kind of grew up within my addiction. The impact has been horrendously negative and just horrible for her. She doesn't trust me. Her uh, stance on it now is that, well, you've, you've been clean and then you've relapsed, you know, tell me what's going to be so different this time. Roy. We're starting to build that close relationship again and that's making me feel a lot happier within myself as well. And I really want that to continue. Andy reveals to the group that just two days ago, he almost relapsed. The obsession's been on me. It was actually on me to the point where I went to the bank, got the money out, had the phone ready, and I was nearly there. I do all of it, and I love all of it, and lots of it, but it was the crack that I was honed in on. Went to the bank, I thought, I've got enough money, I can get 100 quid's worth, but I just went boom. And that's why it's been a great week as well, because I didn't use, and I didn't succumb to that. Because I don't care, you know, I mean, the fuck it button's only there, and I will press it. Just play it all together by this speed. Da, da, to get the next session going, Paul wants each player to warm up with their own mini solo. <laughs> um, OK, this time we're going to go round the circle, and I want every single person, in turn, just to do a little tiny soloistic phrase on top of the texture. Let's start with the piano. Everyone else join in when you're ready, and then, Bryony, you'll do the first solo, OK? Double bassist Viv is a highly trained musician, but she's finding the challenge particularly hard. You can see just by looking at them whether they're comfortable. And that's where addiction comes from. You know, addiction comes from fear. It's fear about what's going to happen tomorrow, guilt about what happened yesterday. We project that we're not good enough, and we project how other people are going to respond to us not being good enough, so we medicate. And what with the, the old drink kind of like giving her a bit of a knock as well, it's, it's um, but the great <laughs> thing is, it. The great thing is you don't, you don't have to get it right. Yeah. You like it to be brilliant. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I need a lack of confidence. Yeah, I know, but you were doing really well. While Viv struggles, 
former drug user Catherine is enjoying the musical challenge. But later in the discussion, it's hard. Catherine it's hard. reveals she's torn between practicing for the orchestra you know, work hard. and the need to look after her mum. Um, I had a very bad time because I've lost a lot of family members, um, father, both brothers. Um, and because my mother's in s such a bad way, all right, she can't help the way she is because having lost two brothers, my brothers, the age of 81, I think... Most of the group believe in total abstinence from drink and drugs. Catherine sees things differently. I mean, I stopped using heroin in 98, went over to methadone. Yes, I'm on methadone. I can have a glass of wine if I want, but I just don't like the taste of alcohol anymore. And Catherine's stance is an issue for some members of the group. Did you say you still occasionally drink? I don't, yeah. Mm. How does the rest of the group feel about that? I know for me, I can't have one drink. I can't, I'm horribly addicted to everything. I never used to be able to. Yeah. For me, to be in recovery is abstinence from all drugs and alcohol is a drug. I think, well, you know, I've, I've, I'm not going to let it ruin my life anymore. As part of the concert, they'll play a Beethoven symphony on stage with the London Symphony Orchestra. It's a daunting prospect. The first thing I want to say is, don't freak out on me, OK? It's a new experience for rock drummer Andy. Andy has just learned timps. Um, OK, let's do it. So we go one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. P means quiet. Yeah. But thank you for your spirit. <laughs> Andy has promised to be honest with his daughter. Forty-eight hours after he revealed his near relapse to the group, Leah comes to hear him play drums. When I went to your mum's the other day, it just felt a bit strange being in that area because that area is a really big tri trigger for me. I went to the cash point. I got 100 quid out of the bank, yeah, and I went over to uh, see somebody and I knew that they had some crack cocaine on them, but I didn't actually ask them. Suddenly, a picture of you came in my head and I just thought, I thought, I can't do this to my daughter. I, I, I didn't use, but um, it, was, it was pretty close. How do you feel about that? Oh, God, no, I want to cry my eyes up. Didn't do it. I didn't do it. You know, the thought of you just stopped me totally in my tracks. You OK? Yeah, I'll come in, sweetheart. Oh. I didn't do it for you, sweet, you know? If he didn't get a picture of me in his head, then he would have, he would have done it. And if he done it, I wouldn't want him in my life, basically. Over the years, Marco has seen a lot of people lose the fight with addiction. Normal people, non addicts, if you like, they have all this stuff going on as well. It's not the preserve of addicts. You know, people do find life difficult. I think the difference with uh, people such as us, the stuff that we've got going on, is once we get into difficult life situations, there's always the danger that we collapse into dysfunction by acting out and drinking and using. You know, I'd love every single one of us to give a great performance and drift off into a happily ever after recovery sunset. If you actually look at the hard facts and figures of addiction, 
you know, there's 10 of us, chances are two of us are going to die from this. That's the numbers, unfortunately. From now on, for our weekly sessions, I would like you guys to bring the ideas to the workshops. They can be as minuscule as five single notes. With just four weeks to go until the performance with the London Symphony Orchestra and a host of individual fears surfacing, Paul launches an audacious plan. The Attic's Orchestra will create their own composition with each performer writing a part. It could be a rhythm, or it could, in fact, be some words that you've written. Does that feel like an OK plan? Yeah. 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 Like yeah. notes, yeah. our own sort of composition. It could be something that you think of now on the bus on the way home. You say um, that, uh, but the uh, thought uh, of me bringing my own words and having to share that with everyone, I yeah. don't think I could write, I don't know. Bring like, what you're comfortable yeah. uh, bringing. If we're going to do a, our own composition... It's got to be our own composition. It has to be our own composition. Yeah. I want the audience in tears. And for me, that has to come from you guys. Your names are all in these bits of manuscript. James, can you choose me sure. four, please? <laughs> sure. These are the people that are going to bring the ideas next week. And the winner is uh, Rachel. Melissa. Helena. Number three. My magic number. How is exciting. it really? <laughs> it is. Brian. Uh, uh, It'll be fine. Viv. If it doesn't break them, the challenge just might bond them together. Okay. Can so, I have some of your ideas, Brian? Please, please. guys. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Viv, actually, I think, took a brilliant idea along next week. That really scared her. And I think it scared Brian, too. Being true addicts, I imagine they'll blow it out of a portion and bring an entire symphony. When actually all they need to do is select like four or five notes on the piano at random and bring them in, or a couple of words. But you can see that kind of alcoholic, addictive process going on of taking things absolutely to extremes. James wants to give a boost to their confidence before the big concert. Mm -hmm. Give it a bit more, give it a bit more, fuck it. Fuck it, fuck it. Until he joined the Addicts Orchestra, Marco has been too afraid to play a violin for as long as 30 years. But in three weeks, he needs to be confident enough to perform in public again. Oh, try, just it. try it again, but really go fuck it this time. Say fuck it, I'm going to do this for the fun of it. OK. I think, I think fuck it are the two best words in the English language when yeah. it comes to, 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 to fear. Yeah. I really do, because, you know, bring it on. Bring it on. It's so inured in me, though, that it needs to be, it needs to be eroded and of eroded course. and eroded and, and eroded. And it's, it's, like, it's like chipping away at a block of concrete. It's almost like a mantra. It will, it, but it will go. But I think that's incredibly positive. You're filling me with hope at the moment. There's something wrong well, isn't here. isn't that good? <laughs> <laughs> James knows that Jules, too, needs to confront her fear of performance. Yeah. It's been 20 years since she's played a note of classical violin in public. <laughs> this is your piano. One thing I said, I'm never going busking again, but here I am. This is not busking. This is not busking. This is this is this is therapy. <laughs> this is therapy. This is where you can just say do what you like. Yeah. But I think we should have a go. Okay. Right. And you've got a lovely, sympathetic audience. <laughs> OK. What's your feeling? Tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me. I was feeling something gone away. What? I was feeling some illness hadn't gone away. Okay, let's just try and get this clear. 
Panicky? Just playing classical. It just makes me feel ill when I finished. And... When you finish? Yeah, I'm fine when I... Get... No, it's before the... No. <laughs> You're playing with real feeling and... I just think it's about daring to go that extra mile and really feel it. We are frightened of saying, this is who I am. This is who I am. Like me or loathe me, this is who I am and I'm going to show you who I am. And if you don't like me, tough. Okay. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So do you think it might be a good idea to play it once more? Would you be up for that? Yeah, I've got yeah? to. I've got to. I can't make it feel like this. I've got to come no, out I the agree. other side. Really lovely. I sort of thought you gave a bit more then as well. Did I? You relaxed a bit more, I felt. Did you feel happy with that one? Yeah. I had to do that because. Is it just sort of like setting, letting a ghost rest, laying a ghost to rest? Mm. And do you, how do you feel right this minute? My throat's not hurting. Yeah. Is it not? <laughs> Next stop, LSO. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's the following week's rehearsal and the deadline for the first batch of ideas. Everyone feels incredibly vulnerable when you volunteer an idea and say, this means something to me. I, I, th I feel something about these words, this melody. Melissa and Rachel are brave enough to come forward first with theirs. Bryony, who's just 25, is especially nervous. I have my guard up so high as a person, but I just thought these people really do get where I'm coming from. Yeah, so I don't know if you want to hear it or... Okay. I think that seems like a good place to yeah, go. Yeah, um, it says, The world collides behind these eyes, flickering love, tender fire, and inner warmth resides. Keep happy, keep young, not hollow. Ooh. Insane. Very atmospheric, yeah. lovely. Yeah. 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 It's got a lovely rhythm, hasn't it? Yeah, lovely rhythm, lovely rhythm. Like James's son, Freddie, Bryony's life might easily have been over before it really started. You'd be drinking and then um, you'd take coke and, and then later on in the night, if you've got no coke left, you'd end up dropping a pill, taking ecstasy, doing speed. Um, you could quite easily go on like that for days. I didn't care about myself. I had no respect for myself, so I just, I just was constantly chasing the high. It's always been sort of me against the world and I've kind of, uh, sort of, I guess, in a way, learned to shut myself off. From people. Five, six, seven, eight, and start. The Attic's Orchestra's own piece is coming together, but for Paul's plan to work, everyone must contribute. And so far, Viv is struggling with the idea. You could bring us three notes, yeah, oh, and we'd go, oh, three, notes three notes on your recorder. And that's a load of false No, no, it's not. Oh, that's so good, three notes. Viv. No, honestly. I don't think so. It's all about what, Paul, you're not convincing me. It's all about what you do with it. I know, look, I know, I know you and Paul keep saying, it's just five notes, it's just five notes. Well, hang on, what people produced last week wasn't just five notes. They came with it with these lovely pieces of music. Mm. However, if Mr Ludwig van Beethoven had come <laughs> and he had just bought da, 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 that would have been infinitely more valid. Oh, God, why do you, you do I mean? this to me? I know, Do you yeah, see what I mean? So you're right. right. Mm. these notes around here well then show me i am doing okay cool <laughs> cool, cool cool um <laughs> oh 
Okay, stop. Dum, dum, bum, 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 bum. You've done it. Hey. So, <laughs> and it's completely off the top of your head, and it's it's fantastic. Lum, bum, bum. Do it again. Oh. Dum, bottom D. And just imagine all the fear you'd built up over that. And the reality, it was nothing like as bad. And now, how do you feel? Re relaxed? Do you feel...? Oh, yeah, I feel more relaxed now. At the next rehearsal, ideas are pouring in. Catherine produces a long and polished composition. Catherine attained grade eight pianist, aged 11, but her father died when she was just 18 and drugs soon took over. When I started taking heroin, that's really when I stopped playing. But I discovered crack in 1996 when it was at its peak. to finish work, score, come back home and spend the night piping. To have the sound of that orchestra with me as the soloist, it would just be absolutely, be paradise. But with continuing stresses about her mum, Catherine uses the therapy group to discuss her difficulties. I mean, a few of you know that I've had a bad week um, with problems at home. Yes, it's to do with my mother. Um, I've found that I'm just crying so desperately. Like last week, I was so depressed, I had a couple of drinks. Now, I know you all know that I, that's not my thing. To me, what I'm hearing is that alcohol actually is your thing because you use drinking last week to cover up feelings. What, two so, drinks? I know, but two drinks to an, an alcoholic is a very dangerous thing. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I, but I, I don't go, I've never gone past that. Do you consider yourself an addict or an alcoholic? Or no, not those anymore. Things? So not you, anymore. So you think I mean, I'm addicted to, to medic my medication, yes. But I don't, I'm, I used to think I'd always have an addictive personality, but I don't believe I have anymore. Catherine is having doubts that more talking will help her. I've talked about my drug life for so long and I've lost people and, and I've, you know, from drink, drugs, whatever, and I've talked about it and that's why I don't like groups. When it's his turn, musical beginner Andrew not only brings a tune... And then it goes to C minor. He starts conducting the whole Addicts Orchestra. That's great, Caroline. Catherine Arthur, that's great. But professionally trained Viv is still struggling to come forward with an idea. Does everybody else have to like chord progressions, melody? And I'm just going to angrily play, right? These are the fucking five notes. Take it or leave it. You do what you want with it because I've done that and that's all I'm going to do because I just don't want to invest any more emotional heartbreak into it because I'm already feeling inadequate about it as it is and not like I should be here. Caroline has brought us a tune. That's me. Is that Baroque? I think I think kind of, yeah, it's, it's Then Viv is suddenly nowhere to be seen. I have to go back for the lunch session. Viv just disappeared, I think, and, and went, I think, just decided she couldn't hack it anymore and, and went off to the railway station, off to the train station. I just couldn't face doing the five-note composition or then saying, I can't do it because it's just so stupid. So... It was just kind of best to fail. 
Viv said she did not want to give up, but two days later she had a fall at her home. She was forced to withdraw from the Attic's orchestra. You said you would help when I was ripping off the plaster. You won't let me tempt disaster in the aftermath of all I put you through the pearly gates, the angel gave. Like so many in the Attic's orchestra, James's son, Freddie, was talented but insecure. Say, my son, you've been too hasty with your life. On the uh, 4th of October, which is about seven or eight months before he died, he writes, I'm playing a little gig on Wednesday, obviously looking forward to it, but the reaction when others hear my music is never enough. I always feel as though people are lying and saying that they like my music out of sympathy. That rings so many bells with our little group. This is about three months before he died. The heroin has reached my stomach and I have been sick. I was smoking it earlier, but it no longer gives me freedom or enjoyment such as it did before. Later, I'm going to inject for the first time. Music, my family, and by extension, love, are all that keep me going at all. I feel lost, a passenger at an empty station. That's about as horrific as it gets in my, in my mind. That is so sad and so dreadful. But ultimately, he still mentions music. Music, 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 music. Will you remember me? The Abex Orchestra is a week away from their performance with the LSO. The rehearsal schedule is intensifying. Well, next week, we're going to be full on every day. I've always thought that's when the stresses and strains are going to show. You know, they're putting themselves out there in that vulnerable position, exposing themselves. You know, I just hope they're all going to be OK. I can't think about it. I'm just going to be in today because if I think about next week, I will possibly projectile vomit <laughs> or pass out or have a panic attack. With the concert looming, Marco wants to put his worst demons behind him. He's taking his wife, Michelle, to the school hall where his musical fear and his drinking first began. Music was the number one priority in my life during my teens and early 20s. I never conceived that I would end up doing anything other than being a professional musician. Go in. I thought that I might be able to crack it as a solo violinist, but at the back of my mind I'm thinking, if you manage to do that, how are you going to handle all this fear stuff? Because it's going to be even bigger. It's exactly the same. I'm on one of these boards somewhere. When we were doing school concert, we used to kind of hang out here before we used to go up there onto the stage. I'd always have drink in there. You know, I'm 13, 14 and 15 years old, and I'd always have, probably in those days, a bottle of wine, a bottle of sherry. I'd go up here. And, uh, yeah, so this place would be packed, and I'd be a little 13-year-old boy, drunk thinking, oh, shit, I've got to play now. And the orchestra would all be standing up for me. Strings would be there, brass there, woodwind, cellos, double basses, and probably have a solo to do as well, and I'd be bricking it about that. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know how I got through it, you know? I was just so frightened all the time. Do you think you can do it again? Or play something now? Yeah. If he can play on this stage again, the hope is he can play anywhere. Three days into the final week of rehearsals, their own composition is in chaos. 
that like anxiety yeah. sickness. You can feel it. It's week. just like this cloud of just insecurity. Yeah. It's like arms are just pulling me back, going, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. don't do it. Freak out. Because it's so many different sections, they've all called like part one, version four, like it's impossible to know from that what I'm actually doing. And I keep trying to rely on my memory and I just can't. Yeah, that's Can we play it? The quality of rehearsals is alarming, Paul. Would you like to do all three of those again? Yeah. Andrew, are you okay? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> play me a round of two, please. I panicked today. I, I thought once, you know, we had the whole piece on the wall and, and we just couldn't remember anything. I thought, oh, God. OK, stop. OK, everyone, take a deep breath and say fuck. OK, go. <gasps> fuck! My only concern, really, is how will we cope with, as a group, if something does go wrong? My spirits haven't gone downhill, but I think everyone's just getting really exhausted. This is just so challenging, and to do it every single day... It's tiring, isn't it? And the next morning, another member of the group is missing. The text from, from Rachel. I was up all night until 7am, feel utterly mad. Shit. By mid-morning, Rachel's panic attack is over. But she's worried it'll happen again before the concert. I'm so fucking tired. Ah. Oh. You'll be fine. I will be scared, probably. That's what I hate. It feels like Russian roulette sometimes. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think normal people just <clears throat> accept that that's the way it is. And yeah. I struggle to accept that. It's the day before the concert. A chance for a final therapy session to share their anxieties. But Catherine doesn't want to take part. So is the group happy to continue without Catherine? Well, we can't force her, can we? Yeah. Has she given any reasoning? Well, she just said to me she wants to practice Beethoven. Oh, come on, that's not... Well, I'd, that's I'd want to practice Beethoven as well. Well, that's what she said. I mean, I'm <coughs> conveying a message that was given to me. No, I didn't want to be in the group. This, um constantly referring to recovery, and when I'm in recovery, I've heard so much of it. Um, I'm afraid I think of myself as recovered. There's part of me that's thinking, because I'm nervous about tomorrow night, mm -hmm. do you know what I could really do is some propanolol <laughs> or some vodka just to take the edge off and then I'll be OK. That's but I'm not going to do that. Of course I'm not going to do that. <laughs> But the people in the LSO were like, well, I would be if I was normal. I'm coming in in the addict's orchestra because I'm an addict and I still feel like, in a way, that that's defect. I'm a defective person. <laughs> oh, fuck. Sometimes I really wish that I wasn't like this. It's really easy for me to just list all of the shit things that have happened to me in my life, but to actually dissect them and tell you how they make me feel is like a completely different, different thing, and it's... Um... Watching the group, Catherine makes a decision. We, so... we heard you um, practising up there. Yeah. So do you think it's pressure about the music or pressure about the group? Um, pressure about the group. Right. Okay. Pressure about the group. Is that, that you is that why you're leaving? Because you feel pressured about the group? Or... Yeah. Why don't you... yeah. The group's now finished. Why don't you come yeah, and play no, music? Yeah, no, because I feel too ill. I feel yeah. too ill. Yeah. Oh. So, sorry, everybody, but uh, I will be back tomorrow. OK. All right. Okay. Look after yourself. Yeah, look after yourself. Catherine did not return. She contacted James to say that she felt she didn't fit into the group and that she did not feel able to take part in the concert. The Attic's personal ideas have grown into 22 minutes of original orchestral music. Only eight of the initial 10 are there to play it from start to finish for the very first time.
But I just want to say, bravo. You know what I'd quite like right now? To go home and sit down and watch some TV and just phone you all up and say, I'm not going to do the concert tomorrow night, it's just a bit too scary for me. But I've decided that I'm going to do that, stone cold sober, and whatever happens, happens. And that's the bravery and the challenge of it. And I might end up melting, but I'll do it. Performance day has arrived. St Luke's in London is the home of the world-leading London Symphony Orchestra. And tonight, the Attic's Orchestra and 25 eminent musicians from the LSO will take to the stage together. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have pace. There wasn't a lot of sleep last night. <laughs> um, Jules, you're going to be number two on the outside in the violins, OK? And I keep feeling my knees go. Mm. <laughs> and that'll get worse. Marco. I don't want to do myself justice. You know, I don't want to get on there and freeze. There's an outside chance that will happen. Yes. Rachel, you're in the right seat. Well done. Excellent. It just feels a bit risky today. I don't know why. This brings back horrible fucking memories as well. Fuck it, enjoy it, fuck it, enjoy it, fuck it, enjoy it, fuck it, enjoy it. That's asking a bit much, James. I think just fuck it. It'll well, let's start with fuck it and hope we yeah. can move on later on. As the audience take their seats, Freddie's sister and mum have arrived. And Leah is here to support her dad. Just hope that I get it right, you know. Especially Leah, for her to just, like, be proud of me, you know. For me, that's, that, that would be the best outcome. That would be the best thing. I feel really nervous. I don't think I've been this nervous in a long time. Just because I feel like the group of... They feel really good together. Um, and they're confident when they're together. But now we've got this whole additional dimension of having the LSO here, and I just want them to completely nail it. I've gone from lying flat out on the floor to lying, I can't stop walking around. Maybe I should just lie back on the Why floor again. You guys have been the most amazing people I've ever met and worked with, and I'm so proud of what you've achieved. It's been such an honor to meet you and to work with you and just go and nail it out there. <laughs> just <laughs> nail it. Good evening, good evening. How lovely to have you all here. Come on. Come on. Bye. Bye. So we have eight of the most wonderful people I've got to know in the last few weeks. People who have had their lives blighted through drugs, through alcohol, uh, who perhaps have been very successful musicians, um, and then getting them back on the road again through music. I'm feeling really dread, just trying not to lose it, really. My heart is going really, really fast, and I'm just thinking, have I got myself into this? Can I get myself out of this? Our musicians for the evening, here they all are. Yeah. swathes of adrenaline. How am I going to control this adrenaline? I'm absolutely shitting it here. I'm thinking I'm going to get found out. Two months ago, this group were brought together as strangers with only their destructive addiction and love of music in common. 
Now it's time for the world premiere of their own composition. Their moment to perform as the Attic's Orchestra before an audience for the first time. doing this you know the, the sky has not fallen in I just feel really encouraged and like I like it's all right actually You know, we were all looking at each other, kind of giving each other like little cues, and we all knew which bit everyone else was frightened of. You know where we've been, and we know that that's, that's been a very difficult place. I haven't ever felt, as a musician, like camaraderie like that, ever. never focused so much in my whole life. each other like down the line it was like none of us could believe what had just happened there's some things that words don't convey it's just a look yeah I don't think we can believe that we've you know done that two months and arrived here two days ago I was saying I wanted this all to be over and now it is I'm I'm absolutely devastated. I've had the most incredible two months in my whole life. They've given me something that I never thought I'd have. 
so it's not such a lonely, scary place out there. You know, when you get sober and clean and, uh, you know, things, things start to fall into place. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. Fantastic. Better than I thought it would be. Uh, it talks about your wildest dreams, and that's certainly one of them, you know what I mean? It's fantastic. One of the greatest natural highs you can get. Just being in front of people and, and just the fear of cacking your pants is just so visceral. I thought just being sober every day was amazing, but to so have done that, it's something I'll just always be able to live up for. Amazing. Very proud. Very proud. Very proud. Yes. This is their piece. They need this success, this joy. And yeah, I'm just surprised. The concert is just the cherry on a fairly large cake. The cake itself is life, and I think most of them, if not all of them, will wake up in the morning feeling different. And I just think they seemed happy. That's, that to me is victory, and that's what this is all about, and made it all worthwhile. And that's what Freddie would say. <laughs>